Hello, my name is Katie and today I will be using current research based in educational studies and cognitive psychology to share ways to diversify practices and improve learning in art history courses. At the end of this presentation, art history educators should be able to number one, recall the benefit of including elements like narrative, interleaving, group work, and frequent low stakes quizzing as well as emphasizing the importance of a growth mindset in class. Number two, build mnemonic devices with students to teach them about memory cues and how to create their own. Number three, develop a series of increasingly difficult scaffolding projects for team-based learning. Number four, explain to students and colleagues the value of utilizing new teaching techniques rather than sticking with the traditional lecture format. And number five, Consider which of the suggested techniques provided may be the most applicable to their curriculum and experiment with modifications to their syllabi to include these new techniques. First, in the introduction, I will lay out some background information for how students are currently learning and the other, more effective methods that can be used. Lectures are the traditional form of teaching in art history, particularly in introductory courses. But this is a passive learning practice and the effort is put forth by the instructor rather than the students. Lectures are not participation based so everything that is occurring during the lesson is prompted by, answered, and explained by the instructor. Students may take notes but research hasn't shown note taking alone to be sufficient to increase learning or recall. Knowledge cannot be passively absorbed. Learning must be active and effortful in order to be stored in long-term memory. For a long time, reading or hearing information presented has been the primary way for students to learn information, and it was relied upon that this exposure was enough for students to remember. However, studies show that this isn't the case. In order to make learning last, active methods must be used so that information can be consolidated within the brain. Team-based learning or TBL, utilizes groups to further conceptual understanding, encourage generation, stimulate student engagement, and puts students in charge of their own learning. When working together in a group, students can teach each other information. This helps the student who is teaching work towards mastery, and the other student receives assistance and clarification on topics they may be unsure of. By putting students in charge of their own learning, they are required to generate solutions amongst themselves instead of relying on the instructor for answers. Students must therefore be more engaged and do more active thinking and discussing than in a lecture format. Team-based learning also fosters creative thinking and it gives students more freedom to approach and explore material from their own perspective instead of only learning the instructor's interpretation. This opens the door for more thoughtful responses to questions, and it pushes students to use higher level thinking skills than in more passive methods of learning. When collaborating, it's necessary for students to use strong communication skills for discussing and justifying their answers or opinions. Just like students in a team work together, pieces of information can also work together through the process of interleaving, which is the integration of related topics to support learning. Interleaving information helps students to make connections and apply learning to new situations by linking related information to form contextual understanding. It's like weaving together different colors of thread. Interleaving information contributes to and helps students to see the greater whole. In short, interleaving reveals to students that the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. However, Interleaving is challenging and slows the initial learning process, but the difficulty it presents increases effort, making it desirable. Interleaved learning lasts for longer and increases a learner's ability to apply the information they have studied. Regardless, the extra challenge makes it unpopular with both students and instructors because the progress is less obvious and immediate. Of course, it is important to make sure students are remembering and understanding what they are being taught. Frequent low stakes quizzing can be helpful for both students and instructors because it helps to identify gaps in memory and comprehension, which creates opportunity to refocus and relearn. For example, peer instruction or PI 
is one form of multiple choice quizzing that includes class discussion, peer feedback, feedback and clarification from the instructor, as well as individual recall practice. PIs are very flexible, so instructors can customize the sessions to their liking. In a PI session, students are prompted with timed questions, which they are first asked to answer by themselves. They may then discuss the question and answers with their peers to decide if they will keep or change their answer. At the end of the question, the instructor will ask a student to explain the logic behind the answer they chose, or will go over the question and answer options themselves. This is also a great chance for students to see their learning applied, to make connections, and to ask questions. Storytelling is one of the oldest forms of human tradition. Since long before words were written down, people have been sharing information through the passing of stories. Learners remember information better when it's presented in a narrative because it includes elements like humor and setting that make information feel relatable in a way facts cannot. Humans are hardwired to seek narratives because we dislike ambiguity and because it gives us logical explanations to emotional responses. Art history is all about response to and representation of the world in which it was created, meaning art is often a narrative within itself. Narratives help learners to develop context and relevance for information. This in turn helps the brain sort information into mental models. Helping students to understand the narrative connections tied to the artwork they study encourages students to take a deeper look when considering and critiquing something new. The most difficult thing to critique is ourselves. Humans have a bias that makes them falsely believe that everyone shares the same values that they do. Metacognition, which is the ability to recognize one's own thinking and perspective, is a critical skill that students need in order to develop a trained eye. Students must be able to accurately self-evaluate and look closely and objectively at how their perspective of themselves, as well as their perspective of everything around them, influences their learning. No one likes to fail. Early in our lives, we learn that successes are rewarded and failures are typically met with disappointment. Because of this, many students prefer to avert challenges and focus on what's easy rather than what is difficult and thus may result in failure. Students with a growth mindset know that learning is a dynamic process and they can see mistakes as minor temporary barriers that present opportunity for improvement. Seeing opportunity in failure may not be intuitive. But keeping opportunity for improvement in mind can greatly heighten a student's drive to learn and their potential to do so. Next, I will present suggestions for implementation. These suggestions are geared towards higher education or advanced high school courses. Suggestion number one, build a series of scaffolding projects incorporating individual work and team-based learning to foster student engagement, heighten analytical and observational skills, and deepen understanding. Instructors can develop a series of projects of increasing difficulty to take place over the course of the term. For example, have students individually write analysis papers at the beginning of the term, then later in the semester create group assignments that expand on analysis, but include higher level skills too. By letting students work independently first, Instructors can ensure students have taken steps towards building the desired skill or skills. Then, when working together in a group, students can use that foundational, practical knowledge for their collaboration and discussion. Suggestion number two. Have students work in TBL groups to develop mnemonic devices. Assign each group to one week of the term, and those students will be responsible for developing a mnemonic device for something presented in that week's curriculum. Art history is full of potential for mnemonic devices, but because the curriculum is already heavily image-based, it may take some additional creativity. For example, one could create a mnemonic device by likening the layout of an early Christian cathedral to a hopscotch path. The path, a common image from childhood, is adjustable so it can accommodate different layouts. It also includes numbers to which cathedral elements can be assigned. Students must actively think about the content when developing their mnemonic device. And later, that mnemonic can make recall more efficient. Suggestion number three. When introducing a new artist or movement, share with students a relevant anecdote about the artist, movement, or work, or a personal story. For example, when studying Art Nouveau, 
It's hard to miss the prevalence of the green fairy that pops up over and over again. This green fairy, better known as absinthe, was a highly popular drink amongst Parisian artists during the second half of the 19th and the beginning of the 20th century, and it was known for having creativity-inspiring properties. To elaborate on Picasso's glass of absinthe, an instructor shared with the class a humorous anecdote about a trip to Europe when he tried the green fairy drink for himself and explained the ritual of how it was prepared. Suggestion number four. When studying art history, there are a lot of dates involved, and after a while, they can start to blur together. Have students create a dynamic timeline they can regularly update over the course of the term to include global events, cultural shifts, as well as class content. The timeline can provide students with contextual knowledge that can help them remember information. For example, constructing a timeline of events in Western Europe during the same time castles were being built can help students see that Viking raids had an impact on the development of castle structure. When studying medieval castles, I can remember that France built fortress-style castles well before the English because they built them as a defensive response to Viking raids. Britain was more united than the rural segmented French, so while the English could fight the Vikings off, France's elite had to find ways to protect themselves and their tenants. Suggestion number five. Peer instruction is one way to quiz students over information. However, it can also be used to stimulate class discussions, debates, or prompt further exploration by varying the kinds of questions presented to the students. Ask students questions they really have to think about with subjective or open-ended answers. Furthermore, PIs can be used to make a quiz into a lesson by asking students to write their answers as they go. Emphasize that the goal isn't necessarily to be right, but to really think about the content. Using discussion, students can gain insight into new perspectives they may not have otherwise considered. Suggestion number six. Help students to develop metacognition and recognize their own biases and nescience in order to more fully appreciate the complexity of art. Looking at something from the perspective of someone else can be enlightening. For example, when looking at art from another time, context can be lost to modern viewers. Perspectives lost by time and cultural differences can be rediscovered by the awareness of one's own ignorance and reconsidering the lens through which we see. Velazquez's Las Meninas, for example, may look to the untrained eye like a portrait of entirely European influence. However, looking closer, small details which would have been highly significant and obvious to viewers of the time appear. Three key elements, cochineal red fabric, red clay pottery, and a small silver tray all show the connection of the Spanish royal family to their effort to colonize South America. Suggestion number seven. Ask students to write a page about a well-known pop culture icon, historic figure, etc., and have them share what that person was and was not good at. Students should also consider how much work and time that person put in to reach their goals. Remind students to keep a growth mindset. The image shown is one of the photographer, Cindy Sherman's, untitled film stills from the late 1970s. This series of photos includes some of her earliest work, and they're often unpolished and raw, but nonetheless, they made her very well known in the art world. These character-based selfies, made long before selfies were a thing, are not without mistakes. You can see the cord of the camera switch in this picture. But nonetheless, she continued her work and she got better as she went. Sherman has said that her focus was on the idea rather than the technique. Like students with a growth mindset, Sherman used her mistakes to improve and is now considered one of the most fascinating, innovating photographers of the postmodern movement. Students who focus on the potential for improvement instead of fearing failure are actively moving themselves towards success. In summary, art history instructors can use a variety of techniques that are more engaging and effective than lectures to increase students' memory, cognizance, and understanding. And finally, here are some great references that I used and I would highly recommend if you would like further information. Thank you for checking out my video. I hope it's given you some ideas and inspired you to go out and give some new techniques a try.